all good things. Now it's time to start into Season 7. Come with me as I continue to watch Through the Clone Wars for the first time. Well, hello there. My name is Jeremy, and welcome back to Freeform Disney, where I talk about all aspects of Disney, from the animated movies to the theme parks to Star Wars, Marvel, and Pixar, and the TV shows, and everything else in between. And that is why it's Freeform. And keep coming back every day for new daily content. If you're not subscribed yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Well, everyone, we're here. It's the final season of Clone Wars, and I really can't believe that there is so little left. Now I've got a few quick things to talk about before we jump into talking about the Bad Batch and Echo. First, thank you so much for taking this journey with me. I really love everyone that I've gotten to interact with in the comments, and I've learned so much about the show just from all these comments and the interactions we've had in here, and hey, I, I hope you have too. Hopefully this has been a big enjoyment on all sides here. So, with that, what are we going to do about the final arc of the show? Fire Llama went ahead and in the comments on the last video requested that I watch them live, and I love the idea. So I want to make sure that all of you love the idea too. Now, if we do it, I'm not sure if Monday would be the best day to do it. Perhaps the weekend would be better, so maybe Sunday. So if you'd like to go ahead and chime on in and let me know whether you like the idea of a live stream for the final arc, and whether Sunday morning, Sunday evening, Monday morning, or Monday evening would be best. Now, I'd really appreciate it if you let me know what you think. I'd like to hear some feedback, hear some enthusiasm if people are interested in that. And also, for those times, I'm in Pacific Daylight Time, which is minus seven hours from UTC at the moment, in case that helps. And we're talking about two weeks from now, because we still have one arc in between then and now. Also, for what it's worth, I'll put a poll up over on the Twitter as well, so if it's easier to jump over there and partake in a poll, feel free to do that. And yes, there is a Twitter account, actually. Not many followers yet, and so I haven't done a ton of tweeting other than announcing each of the new videos. But hey, yeah, always glad to have anybody over there, too. A little easier to interact uh, outside of individual videos that way. Now, one other quick thing here. I just want to let everyone know that I am planning on starting up Star Wars Rebels after Clone Wars is done, which will be another first time viewing for me. And also I'm thinking about having a retrospective video on Clone Wars before jumping straight in. But Rebels, for those who are interested, will still be coming up in another few weeks. Looking at, what is that, four weeks from today? Whew. <laughs> uh, coming up fast. And hey, we got Mandalorian starting up just shortly after that. Well, anyway... I know that was a lot of preamble, so let us jump straight on into the arc while you're all here anyway. Well, and the first episode has the name in it right off the bat, The Bad Batch. And look at that, it caught my eye right off the bat that the Clone Wars title card is different than what it used to be. I'm not sure why it got changed, but Star Wars is completely above Clone Wars now, rather than the split style that it's been the entire time before this. No idea why, but it certainly caught my attention when I saw it. Well, anyway, we are over at Anaxis, a big old battle out in the Outer Rim for control of that planet. And apparently the battle's been going for a while. Hey, Admiral Trench is back once more. Mace and Anakin are there are two big Jedi here fighting. And apparently Obi's also somewhere too. And hey, look at the ships in this battle. There's a lot going on up here in this. And definitely our ships that have fully come to episode three at this point. And I've also got to say, look at these graphics as a whole. Wow. And hey, look at Anakin. It took me a little bit to get used to just looking at Anakin especially now. Just how different he looks with the hair and the hair is flowing and... Wow, and everyone has so much more expressiveness in their faces. Oh, wow, this is, it is an impressive upgrade to the graphics. Well, to the episode itself. So we actually have a reference to some machine learning, apparently, and now they are having all their plans and tactics figured out really quickly. And we get a nice moment with Rex where he's sad over a picture of his former comrades. We talk about missing fives, Echo, and Heavy. 
And Rex is talking with Cody on that. So it's interesting to see the friendship that has come between the two of them. Hey, both captains of their own squads right there. Well, more than just a squad, but you know what I'm saying. (laughs) But it goes deeper than this, because we're not just bringing this up in a vacuum, because no, 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 no. The plans that seem to be coming up from the Separatists here are plans that he and Echo came up with together. And Echo's fingerprints are all over their strategy. But Echo died at the Citadel. Very clearly, he certainly looked like he died at the Citadel. I mean, I was quite sad about that when that one happened. I, I, dang, yeah, I really was. But anyway, he must be alive, right? Dun, dun, dun. So that means we've got to go get into the cyber center of the droids to go find out more about this mysterious algorithm. And that means we get to introduce Clone Force 99, better known as the Bad Batch. Now this is a very experimental Clone Force, and apparently all these clones are defects to a degree, but they're useful defects. I mean, heck, even the way they come in with their ship and come off it, right off the bat, just distinguishing them as characters and their uniqueness. And they look unique as heck, that's for sure. And hey, hey, 100% success rate. So the Bad Batch is made up of Hunter, the leader, Wrecker, who is this big brute, Tech, who, well, is a techie, uh, kind of apparently from the name, and Crosshair, who is our sniper and just all around really good with guns. Now I gotta say, it feels kind of like a setup for a spinoff, doesn't it? <laughs> oh wait, it was. I'll be honest, it would have felt a bit that way with this arc, even if I didn't already know that Bad Batch was coming, as we've commented that the Youngling arc way back was actually also a potential setup for a spinoff, although that one didn't come to fruition, but here's one that did, because next year we have the Bad Batch as a series coming. Hey, I may try to avoid spoilers, but when I'm reporting the news for each week, nothing like a new Star Wars show getting confirmed kind of makes it into my little news report, so definitely know that. Although I was able to avoid much of any other spoilers on Bad Batch, which I'm quite happy about because I didn't look deep into it because I knew that there were potential for spoiling things if I did. So that's nice. Okay, so let's move on. Off we go with the Bad Batch. And again, I'm going to talk about the graphics for a second, but look at the lighting and the atmosphere in this episode and the locations that we've got in here. Dang, once again. Sorry, it's been a while since I've been blown away by a graphics upgrade between seasons like this. To this degree, it's probably the season 1 to season 2 upgrade. Maybe maybe one of the ones after that. But yeah, this is a huge upgrade in the graphics. Anyway, their gunship crashes. Well, yeah, no, that's just how things go, right? And Cody is stuck in it and in a bad spot. Especially as the ship is going to explode. But this is really just a great excuse to show off the strength of Wrecker, who can push an entire gunship up and over by himself. Dang. (laughs) And then we get to go ahead and watch the crew, the whole bad batch, take on a whole battalion of droids while our norms, our regs, I should say, just watch. And the teamwork they displayed during it, and everyone seemed to have a role to play... Even as unique as they were, oh, it was really nicely done. I, I was impressed by that. Oh, and while we're talking about the graphics again, the trees even. These are neat trees. <laughs> anyway, I have to say, it is odd to see Commander Cody so badly injured. It's, there are certain people that we just don't tend to really see get all that badly injured. Cody's one of those. Well, things kind of devolve between our regs and the Bad Batch. Uh, coming up to almost starting into a fight a bit. And what a mess. Took Hunter to break that one up and, well, he, he let Brex be in charge as Cody got evacuated. But interesting little difference there. Now, I do have to say, Wrecker's personality is, is really intriguing. <laughs> he's this big bull brawler, but he's also got this immature humor at the same time. And interesting combo, nicely done. And I'm going to skip ahead just a little bit, because we don't need to watch them go take out an outpost and then get all the way over there. So, point being, they get all the way to our destination, they split up, 
Our Bad Batch goes to the back as the rest of the rigs distract them. And so, boom, off the droids go, and the back door is available. But I love how this goes. Because sneaking in that back door, Tech's like, oh, this is a delicate operation. In comes Wrecker. Boom! You take too long. Busting in the door. I mean, even inside their own crew, they've got this interesting rivalry, and it's not that they don't follow orders per se, but, oh, it's, it's interesting. I like how it's done. So, to the climax of this episode, we find out it is not a program at all, but a live signal from another planet. And who is it? It is CT-1409, which is Echo. So that means Echo is sending this signal. Dun, dun, dun. Our crew gets out, and we can only assume that we're going to go find Echo soon. And hey, look at this end credit music is new now, too, in this episode. And so this was definitely a good start to this arc to the season. Oh, very cool. And also, this is what somebody left a cryptic comment. At least there was at least one cryptic comment, maybe two, underneath the video back in the Citadel where Echo died. Now I understand what those were referencing. It's like, ah, gotcha. He comes back. <laughs> you didn't see that coming. I, I mean, how the heck do you see that coming from the Citadel? <laughs> I mean, it, as far as things that look like clear deaths, that was a pretty clear looking death. But hey, when it is sci-fi, fantasy, superhero, never count anybody as truly being dead. We can always find a way to bring them back. And so, definitely, off the bat from the first episode, looking forward to seeing where the arc is headed, and even off the bat from one episode, that made me excited about the Bad Batch show that we're getting next year. Although, let me tell you, I'd still like to see a Wolfpack show. Just saying. <laughs> uh. So, on to the second episode, A Distant Echo. Clever title. Uh-huh. <laughs> These camera moves that move us into the hangar, oh, geez, wow, they move us in through and around different ships as they're moving. That's got to take a lot of graphics and animation, the kind of work that they not, would not have done in previous seasons. Wow. Anywho, well, we get this interesting discussion between Anakin and Rex off the bat, because Annie's like, first we have this thing to do. Uh, what thing? You know, we don't have time for that, sir. Yes, we do. Come on, Rex. I'm late as it is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I loved it. Just the familiarity between the two of them. Oh, it was nice, nicely handled. And getting more expressiveness in the faces is, is so nice as well. And at the same time, man, I'm still getting used to Annie's hair right there. And I can say, yep. I saw that one being Padme. <laughs> I don't think we were meant to not be able to tell what was going on right there. Yeah. <laughs> and we get a nice conversation between Anakin and Padme. We didn't anticipate the Outer Rim sieges would last this long. That's why they call it a siege, Anakin. <laughs> uh, now that said, that's also... Wow, as soon as she said this was the Outer Rim Sieges, and whoa, that rings a bell right there. Because that means we are getting really, really close to Revenge of the Sith. Because the Outer Rim Sieges directly come prior to Episode 3, so yeah. <sighs> Bad times are coming soon. I just love the relationship between the two of them here, and just how this shows it off, even though we don't get to see a ton between them. The writing is so much more on the spot, and the actors are doing a great job with it as well, as they've certainly gotten used to these characters by this point. And then outside, we get this fun little standoff between Obi-Wan and Rex. Because Obi-Wan's coming up there, looking for Anakin, which means Rex has to quietly warn Anakin by knocking on the door and then stalling Obi. <laughs> well, General, he's, um... <laughs> Well, he's inside your barracks, isn't he? Uh, yes, sir. What's going on here? Nothing, sir. I was just waiting for the general. Uh, general? You'll have to do better than that, Captain. <laughs> uh, he's spot-checking my gear, sir. 
Really? Without you? Well, um... <laughs> oh, that was fun. And Anakin walks out at the moment and tosses Rex's helmet. As if that was somehow what was going on, and you think that's gonna really fool Obi-Wan right there. <laughs> uh, and no, it didn't. Obi-Wan clearly knew what Anakin was up to with the little comment of, I hope you at least told Padme I said hello. Oh, I love that line being in there. It's a good follow-up back to what we had even just in, was it last season? Yeah. Anyway, where we had Anakin and Obi-Wan talking around the edges about Padme. And clearly he knows here. Ah. Ah. <laughs> so close and how that could have changed things if only the two of them were open in that kind of discussion. Ah. Anyway. <laughs> now instead, that line is left to hang there as Anakin walks off although we get some definite looks in his face and the emotions in the exchange most certainly and the music in the background was also nice oh and one other side little note here back in that hologram message where padme and anakin were talking was padme holding her belly just a little right there did she already know she was pregnant at that point obviously anakin doesn't find out until episode three until he actually comes back to coruscant but that doesn't mean Padme didn't know until just before that moment. So considering how she was holding the belly, I'm assuming that's what that was referencing right there. Nice touch again right there. Nice touch. Well, anyway, enough of these small things that are so really cool and I love. And off to the main mission. So we're off to Skako Minor on an unsanctioned mission with Anakin Rex and the Bad Batch. Nope. I gotta say, the Bad Batch, that is a cool ship they have got. Well, anyway, off we go and we come up on primitive Poltex, the natives of this planet, and their giant bird-like creatures, the Kyrdax. And, well, Anakin gets taken away and captured by one of them, and loses his lightsaber in typical Anakin style. Well, we're able to follow them, and hey, it seems like they're trying to communicate with Anakin. And ultimately, we get in there disarm them, and really just have a conversation. And it was really cool seeing tech with that heads-up display for the translation. That's definitely something we could have here in our own world as well, as our translation abilities have gotten so much better using technology. Well, anyway, we keep moving onward. <laughs> the natives are not happy that war was brought to their planet. What the hell are you guys doing? Meanwhile, the Techno Union is not too worried about these people, because after all, the Republic wouldn't attack them, and they'd have corporate neutrality. Well, that's why it's an unsanctioned mission right there. <laughs> so onward goes our crew. They found out where to head from the native village, and off they go. Now, Wrecker's Fear of Heights, such a nice little touch. Love it. Well, I'm not scared of nothing, I just... When I'm up real high, I got a problem with gravity. <laughs> uh, yes. It's not a fear of heights. It's a problem with gravity. Nice. And the argument between Rex and the others over Echo, whether, hey, it's all just a bloody trap and you're falling for it, and why is he even worth saving? Yeah, nicely done. Takes Anakin breaking that one up this time. And then, well, Anakin does talk with Rex about Echo about the possibility that it's not actually Echo, and the fact that Rex usually has been able to avoid these kind of attachments that have really gotten to him until this time. And it's interesting just to see on Rex and Rex acknowledging how this has gotten to him in a different way. Kind of the case of this being the straw that broke the donkey's back in this case. Rex has gone through so much, and this time, just a smidge too far to take it. Yeah. Oh, and I've talked about the graphics here. There's so much more details in the face, but also the wind, how it's being animated on both clothes and hair. Anakin looks so much better that way. So much more lifelike. Well, anyway, up into the Techno Union base that is up there, floating up. Which means up into heights again. <laughs> but don't worry, Hunter will hold your hand. Now cut it out, Sarge. <laughs> Just give me some droids to crush. Or when they get to the top. Remember, everyone. This is a stealth mission. No blasting. No blowing things up. Nobody knows we're here. Eh, 
and then Wrecker and the rest of the Bad Batch charge off the lift and just blast up the droids. As Rex said, so much for stealth. Yeah, yeah. And then even at the end, Wrecker is yelling and whooping after all the droids are destroyed. And, oh, uh, hmm, sorry. <laughs> A little late. <laughs> yeah. And these droids they're destroying, by the way, are funky new droids. Apparently more powerful or dangerous looking? Very interesting. Well, up we come to the giant door, eventually, where it's clear that this is the important room. And this is what we want. Wat Tambor tries a little intimidation. Nobody really cares. Everyone fights off the droid armies that are coming in. Meanwhile, Tech and Rex head on into the room. Now, Echo, this is definitely a case where you could say, he's more machine than man now. <laughs> uh, hopefully not twisted and evil, though. Well, anyway. He's got so much tech implanted in a stasis pod, droid legs too, it looks like, and he gets taken out. And we've got Echo back, kind of? Well, and that's pretty much where we end this one. So it looks like we're going to really dig into Echo and Rex, considering that we've got still two episodes left in this arc. And all the touches in this episode were great. The story feels a little more mature in some ways than the typical Clone Wars fair has been. And I also love the touches with Anakin, Padme, and Obi-Wan as well. Just little touches that add a lot of depth right there. Nicely done on this episode. Really liked it. So on to the third episode of the arc. On the Wings of Kyrdox. Kyrdax? On the Wings of Kyrdax. Well, we have to start off where we left off, and we can't just disconnect Echo because of the interface and who knows what damage that might do to him. So that gives us a reason to have to keep those fights up and going for a while. And eventually bring in this decimator droid. This little tiny thing that apparently is a really bad problematic droid. Well, they end up getting Echo disconnected. Echo says, hey, use that vent up in the top to get out. And everybody moves up there. Well, Wrecker tosses pretty much every one of them up there other than Anakin. <laughs> Impressive strength to be able to toss people that high. Yo. Well, anyway... That decimator droid comes on in and has these cool weapons on it. Oof, I would not want to run into that dang thing. Well, after they get away, Wrecker, well, blew up the whole bloody place. So you have Wat Tambor come in, see all of this destruction, and find out that, oh no, Echo is missing. And he's like, they took it! Techno-union property! They've ruined years of research! Oh, there's so much to dig into right there. Techno-union property, how dare they? Considering the Republic views the clones as property in the first place? Uh, it's understandable in that world where I, the Techno-union might go ahead and view them as property too. Oh, what an ugly little mess. Yeah. Well, anyway, they work this escape and then to get to a spot with a ship, They've got to cross this really exposed walkway. Not really even truly a walkway, but just on a beam. Wow, and way high up with winds too. I just gotta say, poor Wrecker. Oh, and also, admittedly, it's convenient how little the droids choose to fire at them. But, yeah, it's okay. Now we have a fun scene with those bird-like creatures, the Kyrdox. And, of course, those new droids can also fly and chase them. Because, of course, they can. Ay ay ay. There's another reason to have new droids. <laughs> wonder how expensive those ones are. And that also means they essentially brought the droids straight to the village. Ooh. So our people get to have a little bit of a confrontation with the Poltex, the natives right there. Because as the Poltex person says, you broke your word, you brought war to this village. And you said you'd keep us out of that. Yeah. Well, Rex then gets to be the diplomat and try to convince the village leaders to help them. Which I thought that was an intriguing role for Rex to take, too. And just the emotion and the connection to Echo really makes part of his argument there. Because they know they're going to get overrun. They don't have the strength to fight off the entire army that's coming. They need the help of the natives. But using what the Techno Union did to Echo definitely helps the argument and really makes him that much more emotionally involved. Yeah, Techno Union is neutral, my ass. One who, the natives choose to help, and they actually seem to be genuinely helpful in the battle that comes. 
Now, that's not as common. Often we'll bring in whatever small people. They're not really that useful. It's mainly our big people. And beyond that, eh, it, might, it almost might not have mattered the little ones were in there. In this case, they did a nice job of visually showing that they did make a difference in the battle. And then we have these cool two giant droids. They just feel like these like giant War of the Worlds, giant, giant droids with big, powerful laser type shots going on. And then, then we get a fun callback reference. At least I sure as hell swear it feels like a callback reference to me. Anakin and Echo up on this cliff before Anakin jumps off to a droid. The little Echo still showing off, huh, General? You know me, Echo. And Anakin leaps off and on top of the giant droid to take it down, thrusting his lightsaber into it. And that just feels like a reference all the way back to... Somewhere in that Christophsis arc, I'm not sure whether it was one of the two episodes or whether it was that first piece of the original movie. I remember it was somewhere in that Christophsis arc where Anakin also took down a big droid similarly from the top. So it definitely feels like that. And an Echo would have been there, so that feels like a connected piece right there. Yeah, anyway, at least I think Echo would have been there. <laughs> at any rate, it feels like a callback reference to me. And I thought that was a cool callback reference and one I caught. And while we're talking about Echo for that matter, I mean, wow, Echo integrated right back into all this fighting really quickly. And that was interesting and neat to see, too. And it was interesting, this little conversation that Wat Tambor had after they ended up getting away. Eh, no, 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 we're going to wait to inform the Separatists because we got to find a way to recoup on our investment. <laughs> yes, we should say, while I certainly would say the Techno Union is not neutral they're not pure separatists either they still are about their own ends by far and above it just happens to align with the separatists at the time being <laughs> that's gonna probably come back to bite someone in the ass right there and then the natives tell our people that hey and anakin specifically the jedi will always have an ally here i, I just have to ask this little question so once anakin goes to the dark side and is actually a member of the Sith. Is it him who is welcome there, or would it be, say, the Jedi of the time? Most likely, the natives probably wouldn't care or know the difference. They'd probably know Anakin, and probably just lump everybody together, if I had to make a guess, the same way a lot of people do with the Jedi and the Sith. But just an interesting little question right there, since Anakin's not long in time for being a Jedi anymore at this point. Oh, poor Anakin. Poor Galaxy, for that matter. And then we have the last conversation of this episode, which is just between Rex and Echo, which is a nice way to end it. Hey, the, of course I came back. Hopefully it'll be just like old times. And Echo, yeah, just like old times. There's just this uneasy and ominous a little bit feeling to that. How do things go back to old times when you've been out of it for this long and you're not the person you were? Especially after having gone through that. Whew, yeah. So this was definitely another good episode for sure. Now it didn't dig as much as I had hoped into things like Echo and Rex. Because it was too action oriented. But the action was really good. So I'm not truly complaining. <laughs> but at any rate. That will take us on to the final episode of this arc. And that is unfinished business. So there are still lingering questions on Echo's true loyalties given his entire captivity. And probably how he looks right now would add to that too, I gotta imagine. So our people, the Republic is losing across an axis currently. But hey, Echo here can be their wild card. Now during their little planning meeting and tactical stuff, it really is nice, I thought, how Mace actually invited Echo's input when Echo came in. Rex was going to kind of push away, and nobody else stepped up to go do this. Nice awareness. Just bring in another point of view. If he thinks it's that important. And it turns out to be a plan that they end up going with. Their plan is to head over onto Trench's command ship, and we're going to use that to go ahead and feed them battle plans which the republic will know first so that way the republic will have the advantage so once again it's a mission for anakin rex the bad batch and echo this time now at this point when the episode started here i just had the feeling that echo wasn't coming back from this mission 
that was my opinion and my take when I was first watching this. It was interesting to see some of the distrust. We didn't really play heavy into the distrust of Echo here. Mainly it was amongst our Bad Batch people. Because Mace goes ahead and chooses to trust him relatively quick. And Rex never seems to waver in his trust at all. So it was really more a question of the members of the Bad Batch trusting him. And even then, they don't seem super distrustful. Just more on a wary side. Understandably. Well, anyway... On up we go. And then, in the meantime, Mace is launching an assault on the assembly plant down on an axis. And I love the gold leader thing up there with the earlier proto Y-Wings, essentially. Oh, that that's cool. <laughs> and then, when Mace drops down into the whole giant room with tons of droids in there in the assembly plant. Oh, that, that was... <laughs> it's too much fun. <laughs> Mace is all. My name is General Mace Windu of the Jedi Order. At this point of the Clone War, I have dismantled and destroyed over 100,000 of you Type 1 battle droids. I am giving you an opportunity to peacefully lay down your weapons so that you may be reprogrammed to serve a better purpose than spreading the mindless violence and chaos which you have inflicted upon the galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> Blast them! As Obi Wan says, well, I guess it was worth a try. <laughs> also, it makes me just think of Obi Wan's entrance in episode three as well, where there were even more droids in that room. Well, hello there. Yes, General Kenobi. Now, I, I love the humor in this, and there has been good humor and a good spring in this step for this whole arc here so far. Just very nicely done. It, nice pep. Well, Echo gets into where he needs to up on the ship, and he ends up sending all the droids to the assembly plant, so he can neutralize them all there. Understandably, some Bad Batch questioning him just a bit on that one, considering. And back down on the planet. I love the reactions to the plan. I see Anakin's being as insightful as ever. Mace, I was told not to worry. It was all part of their plan. If I know Anakin, we've got the easy part. No, no, I think you really did have the harder part there. <laughs> but yeah, just the reactions. And hey, then we wanted to mace finish off the droids. Well, the ones that were in the room at the moment. I know we want with this whole, ha, huh, weren't as many as I thought there were going to be. And then all the droids come in every door. Mace, does this meet your expectations? <laughs> Back to that Star Wars wit and humor, just the quips were on point here. Felt very much the right style for the time period. Well, anyway, the plan ends up being successful. We pulse destroy them. But Trench has a backup plan. Because, of course, he does. He has this ginormous bomb at the assembly plant that apparently is big enough to blow up a good bit of the planet. Yo. So Echo is going to go ahead and work on getting the code while Mace heads down to the reactor. And... Well, that means Anakin's also going to head off after Trench to see if he can help there. But Echo knows it's dangerous trying to go get this code that he's going to be discovered. And, well, Echo gets Mace most of the numbers, all but the last number, to be able to deactivate the thing. Which Mace is using the force to actually press the buttons, because there's a ray shield that got put up in between him and the actual bomb. Which, hey, Jedi. I, I liked that. Nice touch. And, yeah, Echo didn't get that last number because he got overloaded by a pulse sent back there. And that also means it's battle time for our people up on the ship. And that takes us into Anakin's entrance onto the bridge. Who can't not talk about this. Even his first appearance jumping into the bridge there, there is an underlying sense of anger from him. Considering the number of people that are set to potentially die if that bomb goes off, that's enough to set Annie off. That's for sure. The whole, tell me the sequence to disarm the bomb. And you just hear the undertone in that. And then Trench is all, never, Dooku would kill me for losing an axis. And Anakin, and you think I won't? Trench, you're a Jedi, you're nobility. And then Anakin interrupts him by slicing three of his arms off. Boom, just like that. And you're just like, whoa, wow. And Anakin then afterwards growls out, I don't have such weaknesses. Now let's try that again. She says with this deadly calm and an undertone of hatred in there. Ooh, 
that dark side of Anakin right there. And the music, of course, is on spot as well. Oh, I, the music's often been on spot in this, and especially in this arc, too. Yo, just seeing that on Anakin. Again. Yeah. And, and this is not a huge thing. It's not like we spend a big portion of this arc talking about Anakin and the dark side or his temptations or his anger, hatred issues or any of that. It's just this little portion up on the bridge. But yet the impact of doing just this little portion, it just reverberates and echoes through and nicely done. Because we are getting close to episode three here at this point, so it makes sense to see even a little more of this. <sighs> yeah. Well, anyway, he gets Trench to give him the last number, the bomb gets disabled, and, well, Trench chooses to attack Anakin and gets himself killed. Well, I mean, Anakin kills him. And then the last moment, Anakin takes this button, which looks like a detonator, shall we say? Especially with his comment of, huh, Wrecker's gonna love this. <laughs> Yeah. And then we get some fun fighting in the hallways, Wrecker getting to be the wrecking ball. <laughs> yeah, that, it's just fun moments. Or then Crosshair says he's going to go give him some time. Wrecker's all, oh, he's going to try and top me. You watch. And then Crosshair shoots off this shot that just keeps ricocheting back and forth and are all around down the hallway, taking out all these droids, an insane number of droids. That is just one amazeball shot he makes. And Wrecker just standing there dumbfounded as he watches it happen. <laughs> that little rivalry between Wrecker and Crosshair that just comes through loud and clear here. And then, hey, back on the ship, Anakin's all like, got a present for you, Wrecker. Oh, seriously? I get to blow it up? The whole stinking thing? This is the happiest day of my life. With a tear in his eye even. Oh. <laughs> uh, too much fun. And then he goes and blows up all the Separatist ships. One after another. Which, by the way, that was pretty too. Okay, and then we head on down to the planet to go finish this up. So Obi-Wan and Mace. Hey, you've got medals coming to you to the Bad Batch. And that's their exit from the episode. But the Bad Batch, well, they're not here for the accolades. It's just not what they're after. But there's an interesting discussion, because Rex has already been walking off a little bit. And so it's a Bad Batch and talking to Echo, and Hunter's like, hey, you sure it's your thing? And Echo's like, yeah, what do you mean? Hunter's all, your path is different, like ours. If you ever don't fit in with them, well, find us. And it's like, oh, of course, of course we're going this direction here. And that leads to this really nice final moments between Echo and Rex. Rex makes this line about, hey, those are some of the finest troopers I've ever fought alongside. And Echo, you and I go way back. If that's where you feel your place is, then that's where you belong. And, ugh, nicely done and the looks on the faces. And especially now that we have these really expressive faces that we do have. And especially Rex, after he's walking away, walking toward the camera, toward Oz, and then looks back over his shoulder. And then the salute at the end, because Echo does. He heads over to the Bad Batch after that talk from Rex. And Echo starts the salute, and then followed by the entire rest of the Bad Batch. And that's how we end the arc. Oh, very touching. Beautiful, beautiful ending to it there. Well, was, yeah, great arc. Loved it. By the way, I was clearly wrong about Echo dying in this episode. Although he does kind of move out of the show, so maybe I wasn't completely wrong. Okay, I'm stretching to just try to make that work. <laughs> uh, no, definitely called that one wrong. Now, all that said, I'm definitely excited to see the Bad Batch show now when it starts up, too. Having seen this, and hopefully it's going to maintain this quality in visuals, music, and story. Gotta see some more of Hunter, Wrecker, Tech, and Crosshair. And hey, Echo now, too. And this arc right here, this arc surprised me. It had to pull double duty of introducing both a new group of clones for a potential spinoff and use her own characters with their own story. A story which also had to bring Echo back for that matter. So, yeah, and it did spectacularly. This one, this is in my top five arcs for the series at the moment. Where exactly? Not entirely sure. But it's definitely top five. That said, there's still two more arcs left in the show, so will it be a top five by the end of the show? Maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. Depends on what I think of those next two. 
all that said, I can't tell you how excited that makes me for the upcoming Bad Batch show. They did a great job of making people who were certainly clones, but very unique clones, both in personality and combat style. And my favorite of them, surprisingly for me, is actually Wrecker. He's just too enjoyable. Although, in fairness, Echo would probably beat out Wrecker for me for what it's worth, but counting the original four there. And as far as the arc is concerned, Echo being in there is definitely a big added plus. And yeah, I'm sure that's probably part of the reason, since it feels like a setup for a spinoff. That way you're putting a character we already knew into there as well. Although he's someone we knew but different now. And I'm, I, I can't knock that. It was a good move, and I frankly have no issue with Echo being back. It was done too well, and I enjoyed how they brought him back too much. And hey, that Bad Batch show? That is going to be coming just next year. I wonder what other kind of characters might make an appearance during this. Now, if memory serves from when I reported on that series we made, I think they're on their own as mercenaries. But we could certainly see others show up, I would assume, uh, assuming they survive through the end of the war, of course. Makes it kind of a fitting follow-up to Clone Wars in that sense. And heck, it makes me think of that line from the end of the Umbara arc about how something like they're trained just to be soldiers in a war and what are they going to do once it's actually over. And it feels like Bad Batch will actually explore exactly that question. I suppose we'll see, as I don't know, but sounds like that's the potential direction of it there. And also maybe being a little more mature necessarily than Clone Wars? Maybe, maybe? <laughs> hey, there's hoping. Well, this season is off to a spectacular start. I can't wait to go ahead and see more. Now, with that said, don't forget to tell me what you think about doing a live watching of the final arc and what time would work best, by the way. I wonder if any of you got that little notification on a live stream. That was me messing around, checking it out, and testing some things there. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to actually send out a notification. <laughs> My bad. But yeah, testing it out to make sure I'd be able to do it when it comes to a couple weeks from now. But yeah, if you're interested, let me know. And hey, I can't skip a typical, hey, what about you? So what about you? Who is your favorite member of the Bad Batch? And are you excited for the Bad Batch show next year? Let me know down below in the comments. And thanks for watching. If you like the video, please give it a like and a share and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you back here tomorrow for another new episode of Freeform Disney. Have a magical day and may the force be with you. Always.